You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9. Coming up on this edition of the show, Dr. Luke Rostocki and Michael Campbell talk about MBHC's merger with OBGYN of Southeastern Ohio, and we'll get to know Dr. Rostocki. Captain Jeremy Wilkinson from the Sheriff's Office and Jamie Hopps talk about an upcoming veteran's breakfast, and we find out what's going on in the great outdoors from Guernsey County Game Warden Roby Williams. It's all ahead on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios, it's Talk of the Town with Perry Baranich. Welcome to a brand new edition of Talk of the Town. We're coming to you as always from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. And I just want to take a minute and uh, send out a big thank you to Mr. Jeremy Scott for filling in last week. He did a phenomenal job. So he's, he's just a great guy. <laughs> Joining me in studio right now, we have to my far left, which would be your far right, uh, Michael Campbell, who is the Chief Operating Officer for Muskingum Valley Health Centers, and Dr. Luke Rostocki, MD, who uh, deals with obstetrics and, and gynecology. Good, good to have you guys on the program. Good to see you, sir. It's a and pleasure. Thanks. Thanks, Perry. You are, um, you are here to explain some things, but doctor, you know, first thing we wanted to talk about was a merger that kind of took place. Explain that to us. Sure. Um, <clears throat> thanks for having us on oh, again. Glad okay. to have you. Um, <clears throat> so when we first came to Cambridge uh, two years ago, um, we had some initial conversations with um, Dr. Wright and Dr. Binkowitz about possibly doing some um, uh, high-risk OB um, under our umbrella. Okay. Um, and they were in the process of trying to find another partner to come on board sure. because for the past five years, it's just been the two of them in their call rotation. Mm -hmm. Um, so to, um, to get more time to be able to um, lend that service, um, they wanted to wait until they added another provider. Well, they were having trouble trying to uh, bring providers to the area. Okay. So that's when we kind of met together and said that we'd kind of go in together and try to find someone, you know, to bring to the area. Um, so that's when we found Dr. Rostocki. Um, so we brought him on board to the MBHC side, okay. um, and that's when the talks um, started between uh, Dr. Wright and Dr. Binkowitz in their practice, um, uh, nurse practitioners, uh, Kim Anderson mm -hmm. and Tammy Lawson. And uh, we started to talk about, well, what, what would it look like with Dr. Rostocki and their call rotation? And then it went one step further of what would it look like if they brought their practice on to, uh, to MBHC. So and the rest is history as the they rest would is say. history yes and that um, all those talks started in May okay. of, of this year okay and um, as of August 21st uh, they became part of MVHC so we added five providers and 21 staff in less than three months which uh, the the only reason that that um, went so well is we merged two great teams together and hence Dr. Rostocki is here in Cambridge. Welcome to the Cambridge area. You've been here for Thank a while. You. Tell us about yourself, and uh, the second part of the question is, why did you decide to come here? I, I have a correction. They okay. didn't find me. I found them. <laughs> uh, <it's> correction really <laughs> noted <laughs> under the correction bar there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was so totally uh, impressed with uh, the way they work, with their, their facility, and with their mandate. Um, I came from West Virginia. I practice in a hospital in Somersville, and, and I'm also a professor at WVU, West Virginia University. That hospital closed, and I really didn't feel like relocating anywhere else. So that was um, my choice, close to my family, in mm -hmm. the center, in the middle of all my family. Mm -hmm. This is how I ended up here. And uh, you bring uh, a, a lot with you as far as medical background. Talk about your medical history. I graduated in uh, Winnipeg, which is central Canada. Um, then did the fellowship in fetal maternal medicine, then the ultrasound classes, and then practiced uh, in Ohio, really, after that. I moved to Ohio, to Medical College of Ohio at the time. Now it's University of Ohio. I practiced there for many, many years. I met my wife there. Um, my specialty is high-risk OB, but um, I also provide, I also do surgery minimally, um, the laparoscopic surgery, and perhaps it's the better description of it. Um, uh, a lot, many years of experience. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's good. What was it that um, impressed you about MVHC? Because something had to draw you here. There were two things. The one was the mandate. Uh, I walked in and, and I learned immediately that there is um, no such a thing as uh, concern about being paid, concern about being uh, 
um, recognizing the community, it's the patient that was important to them. And also the, 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 the way the, the practice, the MVHC at Zanesville was set up, uh, there is internal medicine, there is family practice, there is OBGYNs, there is dentistry, there is counseling. It's all integrated, it's all in one spot, and the patient goes just from one room to another, mm -hmm. which is how, in my opinion, the medicine should be. Which leads back to you and the plans for the brand new facility here in Cambridge. I know you guys are excited about it. Absolutely, yes, Perry. We're um, currently uh, meeting with architects and, and planning through the planning phase right now, and then hopefully uh, break ground um, the middle of next year. Um, but as Dr. Rostocki talked about, that comprehensive service um, where we um, offer, um, um, have an adult service line, which is basically um, functioned as your primary care provider. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, comprehensively adding women's health mm -hmm. and um, mental health, uh, the counselors, uh, dental, and pediatrics, which currently in, in the, the modulars um, across, from, across the street from the sure. hospital, sure. Um, we do not offer dental. But once we build that building, then we will have um, all five comprehensive services to offer. And it, it has to be exciting for you, and I know we have like a minute and a half. For you, uh, a new physician coming in, to have this new facility going to be come to fruition soon. Oh, very much so. Um, but really, the facility is just a building. The mm -hmm. people that I work with, uh, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure to be there. That's what's exciting. Sure, having them in a nicer place would be great. If somebody wants more information, uh, how can they get in touch with MBHC? So um, we're taking new patients for, okay. for all services. Okay. Um, for uh, women's health, um, if you dial 740-439-9911, okay. that'll take you right into the, uh, the office. Uh, there at OBGYN, okay. um, and then for um, adult pediatrics and, and mental health, 740-421-9530, uh, uh, okay. and that actually goes to our call center. Well, we know that MBHC is a welcome addition, and now Dr. Rostocki is a welcome addition to our community. Absolutely. So well, thank, thank you. you so much. Pleasure to meet you, Thanks sir. Thanks for having us. Thank Thanks you for coming on. Yes, sir. And we'll be back with more Talking Town right after this. Talk of the Town. We'll be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Ruth Dixon and her crew bring you the things you need to decorate your home with country charm and warmth. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great, great place to live, work, and play. play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the Classic Difference for yourself. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com slash Talk of the Town Show and stay up to date. 
Welcome back and thanks for watching Talk of the Town. And boy, do we have fun oh, in the hi. studio when the cameras aren't running. Hey, Guernsey County Sheriff's Office and the uh, Guernsey County Board of Developmental Disabilities teaming up to hold a veterans breakfast. And here to tell us all about it, we have uh, Captain Jeremy Wilkinson uh, from the Sheriff's Office and also Jamie Hopps, uh, Community Relations for GCBDD. I got all that in there. How are you, sir? Good to see you, sir. Yes. And good to see you. How did this all come about? Uh, we started planning this actually last year. Uh, Kelly Brown, the superintendent, mm -hmm. kind of thought this was something that we needed to provide for our veteran community. Is this the first event of its it kind? It will be the first event, yes. Okay, what's going to take place? So essentially, uh, Sheriff Jeff Payton and Kelly Brown, the director of the Board of DD, got together and they said, hey, let's host a breakfast for veterans and let's include uh, the independent stars in this. Uh, so the independent stars is an organization. Yes, Go ahead. independent yeah, let's talk stars about is a self-advocacy group that we have to promote learning about what your rights are as a human being as somebody with a developmental disability. So it's how they can give back to the community and learn what the community has to offer. Is that new? Uh, the group is it? We've had it a few new? years now. Yes, like, it's it's very important. It is. It's something that most people would never think of. Right. The breakfast is called Breakfast for the Brave. It is so. Down at the Board of DD uh, mm -hmm. on November third, from eight a.m. to one o'clock, the Sheriff's Office, the Guernsey County Sheriff's Office, along with the Board of DD, is going to be cooking and serving breakfast. Uh, for the community uh, by donation only mm -hmm. uh, and down there we're going to be cooking up pancakes mm. some sausage mm. we'll have uh, just a whole host of different things down there just to show our appreciation uh, for veterans um, I've been on here before I was a 20-year mm -hmm. uh, Marine mm -hmm. um, so it's near and dear to my heart uh, Sheriff Payton uh, is very pro-military. We have six veterans mm -hmm. uh, at the sheriff's office ourselves. Um, they're a great addition to the team there, and it just shows that solidarity in the community when we can do something like that uh, for our community. Appreciation for veterans is something that should never ever be generational. You know, mm -hmm. growing up, uh, I grew up, you know, I'll be 61 this year, so we were taught we still have that huge appreciation for those who've served our country right. and we don't ever want that to tail off. Absolutely. It's something that should never go away. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's very important to remember uh, what veterans did for our country uh, and show that appreciation and when you look at a veteran and, and say thank you for your service that it actually means something. Yeah. And this is our way through the Board of DD to thank our veterans for their service and to show that we appreciate um, uh, what the Board of DD does for our community because it's very important uh, for organizations like this to work together. Um, d the uh, donations are going to go to um, some certain there's basically actually, charities, are they not? Yeah, there's three organizations, organizations yeah. in the county. One of them is the Ohio Combat Military Veterans. Okay. Um, we also have the Guernsey County Disabled Veterans and there's also an o Ohio Combat Motorcycle Association. So you Every dollar that you donate for your breakfast, you get one vote for one of those organizations. Okay, and then that money will go to, but all three of these organizations are going to be? The top winner. The will top get winner. The okay, so that's mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. to know yes. that for every dollar donated, you get one vote. Yes. Right? Wow. This is going to be great. It's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, just um, eight to one, it's at Golden Rule School? Yes, is it is. It's in our gymnasium. Talk about Golden Rule School a little bit. Uh, Golden Rule School has actually just celebrated their 60th mm -hmm. anniversary. The state of Ohio just celebrated their 50th anniversary. Um, that's actually where Kelly Brown is today at the State House celebrating um, self advocacy for our independent stars. Um, but this year we celebrated 60 years and we were the forefront of all of the county boards. So mm -hmm. all of the, the whole state of Ohio kind of focused on what Guernsey County has done. Mm -hmm. And on that same token, um, what is, you know, the Board of DD? Explain, a lot of people might not know exactly what the Board of DD does or is. Uh, the, the Board of DD kind of helps. We go in at birth. If you have a diagnosis, we can help you through early intervention or help me grow services, and we'll follow you through your whole life and provide services for you. It's a great organization. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yep. And I know, you know, Captain Wilkinson, the, the Guernsey County Sheriff's Office uh, is is really, uh, and this is a lot of uh, Sheriff Payton's doing, mm -hmm. really want to get involved with the community things. Talk about that a little uh, bit, because you guys are involved. Absolutely. From out, you know, Sheriff Payton really uh, 
looks to his deputies, his personnel to outreach into community service, whether it's coaching youth teams to working with the Board of DD to volunteering at schools, just outreach and just not being somebody in a uniform to really inculcating yourself into a community as a person uh, to let the community know that you care uh, about them it is a very important message that he tries to send. His, um, right now his head is swelling. Can you say more good things about him? I'd like to just see oh, it continue it, to grow. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 just, uh, it's a phenomenal person to work for. Oh, well, wow. That was a good <laughs> comment right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's hooping hard. He might flip that table. <laughs> yeah, I know, it could be. But again, uh, this is a joint effort between GCBDD and the uh, Guernsey County Sheriff's Office. And uh, Jamie, again, go over the details one more time, the what, when, where's, and why's. So the Breakfast for the Brave will be Friday, November 3rd from 8 to 1 at the Golden Rule School. And cost is just by donation. Everybody is welcome. You don't have to be a veteran. Okay. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you yeah, take a minute and thank a veteran. If you oh, see yeah. a veteran, thank a veteran. I've, I've been doing that, you know, trying to be conscious of that. Mm -hmm. And I know we all should do that because look at what, you know, they've done for us. That's right. Really. That's right. All right. I've been talking with uh, Captain Jeremy Wilkinson from the Guernsey County Sheriff's Office and Jamie Hopps from the GCBDD. Guernsey County Board of Developmental Disabilities. I can say that once or twice, but I'll be okay. Thank you so much. Thank and you, sir. Much success with the event that's going to be coming up. And we'll be back with uh, Guernsey County Game Warden Roby Williams right after this. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to yourradioplace.com. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We're coming to you, as always, from U.S. Bank in beautiful downtown Cambridge. And as always, we say thank you very much to U.S. Bank for uh, hosting our show. Hey, uh, Guernsey County Game Warden Roby Williams is in the house. Yes. Yeah, and I, I wrote down, my first question I wrote down here was, uh, what season or seasons are we in? And then you always hand me this sticky note of, with just filled with stuff. We're into a lot of stuff right now, aren't we? We are. It's a good time to be a sportsman. And an, oh, as, as it is always the case, it's a good time to be a sportsman in southeastern Ohio. Yeah. Is, uh, the colder, is cooler weather coming in help any? Absolutely, help? yeah. The, really, the warmer weather has probably slowed the movement, of, particularly deer. They probably haven't been moving as much as they normally would. You know, they're not looking for food as as readily. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing would probably go for waterfowl sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, the cool weather has come in this weekend, or this, this week, mm -hmm. and uh, of course I, I just heard that uh, potential for snow next week. So I heard that too, and oh. I'm saying no, but yeah. that's what we heard. Yeah, well, if you're a sportsman, be. that's, that's, that's it, probably a good thing. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot, lot coming in, a lot, lot in right now, and, and also several things still coming in. So what's in right now? Well, uh, I'll, most you know, squirrel or small game seasons, uh, dove still in. Uh, we just opened up uh, our uh, fall turkey season mm -hmm. uh, on October 14th. Uh, our waterfowl seasons are in right now for our south zone. Those will be going out, I think, on November 5th. Um, 
So several things coming up are, are, are activity right now. And of course, our deer archery season started uh, the end of September. And uh, I've seen several folks have been fortunate enough to harvest a deer. I've seen a few pictures on social media and stuff. So you, um, I know you like to hear from folks when, when they see the poults come in. Uh, and that kind of helps you somewhat determine the deer population, doesn't, does it not? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. If, um, you know, we do many different surveys to determine populations throughout the year. Uh, when you're talking about turkey poults in the summertime, absolutely. And then in the wintertime after deer season, we'll do another survey on, on a, a, a count of like a male carrier around, mm -hmm. count how many deer they see or how mm -hmm. many different small okay. game. We do roadkill surveys. We drive around and count different animals wow. that, that have been hit on the road. And not all of those get you know, put into, uh, to, into population models and, and determine um, estimates on population. So yeah, very, th th there's a lot of science to wildlife management. You've got um, a lot of youth events that are scheduled, but what is upland game? What's the definition of upland game? Well, I, around here we're talking mostly rabbits okay. um, and pheasants. Okay. Now we don't have wild pheasants here in our neck of the woods. Uh, over in central Ohio, there's some, there's some wild populations, but the Division of Wildlife for years has supported the, the pheasant population mm -hmm. by releasing birds that we raise. Okay. This year we're gonna be turning over 14,000 pheasants wow. loose throughout the state. And so that'll occur right prior to opening day of Upland Game, which I think is on November 3rd this year. Okay. And then we'll do it again right around Thanksgiving. And that's a tradition for many folks to go out on Thanksgiving morning, you know, do a pheasant hunt. Do you and, hunt pheasant? Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. How hard is that? Uh, not too bad. Really? I mean, if, if, they're, if they are where you're looking for them, then it <laughs> makes it a little <laughs> yeah, bit easier. It does but, uh, indeed. Uh, but yeah, and so, and in particularly uh, on our youth seasons, uh, this past weekend and this upcoming weekend is youth only upland game. Okay. So kids 17 years of age and younger can go to the field, hunt rabbits and pheasants and, and, um, and things like that. And uh, here locally over at Tri-Valley Wildlife Area, just mm -hmm. uh, by Adamsville, north mm -hmm. of Zanesville, mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've turned 750 pheasants loose just for the kids. Oh, okay. So, uh, good chance for uh, for folks to get out there uh, before our, our upland games, our regular upland game comes in, and take the kids out and maybe get a chance to harvest a pheasant or two. There are a lot of are are, are is there still a big interest in in uh, bird hunting? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. You know, our grouse season's in right now. Mm -hmm. Also, didn't mention that earlier, but grouse season's in. Um, grouse hunting is a uh, kind of a niche sport. Not a lot of guys are participating in mm -hmm. it, uh, mm -hmm. but it is. Uh, but can be very exciting, very adventurous if you get a couple grouse up, and um, and uh, we need to be you need to be looking in the right habitats, looking for that heavy, thick underbrush. That's uh, where they like dense to forest, hide, yeah. right? Basically, yep. or nest there as yeah. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, and then you know, uh, a lot of our forests are more mature hardwoods right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you get in those low grounds, uh, low bottom lands where you might have some more. Okay. Uh, thicker cover, you might ha have luck finding the grouse. Let's talk about your upcoming workshops. You've got a lot of those. We do have a couple, and uh, the, the local soil and water offices uh, give a shout out to both the uh, Guernsey and the Noble County soil and water offices. They uh, they do a lot of stuff for uh, not only co not only the agricultural community but also the natural resource community. Mm -hmm. And um, Levi Arnold, Le Levi Arnold is hosting a uh, field to table workshop coming up tomorrow night out at Jurassic Park and that's gonna be involving deer. So okay. from the field to the table, they'll have stuff out there to sample uh, as far as uh, uh, venison recipes, okay. and then talk about how to, you know, how to uh, clean your deer and process it and things like that. So good chance to get out there and learn a little bit about deer hunting sure. if you're not familiar with it. Yeah. So looking to do it on your own, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good. that's good, and then also down in uh, Noble County, they're gonna be hosting a small game field to table. A little bit different. So again, talking about rabbits and pheasants and squirrels, uh, taking them from the field right to the table and having some recipes out there and uh, some samples. A couple of minutes left. Um, bobcat sightings. Yes, uh, you know, I think uh, the Division of Wildlife, as, as we've talked about before, uh, is very eagerly looking for uh, bobcat sightings. Uh, we've actually put a, a, a link on our website now that you can report any wildlife, any wild animal sightings, anything unique like a bear, maybe a river otter, mm -hmm. and particularly bobcats. Mm -hmm. And of course, like we talked about earlier, our, our, uh, in, the, in the summertime, our, our turkey populations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you're seeing bobcats, and this time of year when a lot of folks have trail cameras out, uh, would encourage guys, if you got a picture of a bobcat, the Division of Wildlife wants it. So please either contact us, contact our district office, or at least go on the website and click on the wildlife sightings link 
and you can upload a photo. Uh, there's a little map on there that you can click on where you saw it, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we can again add that to our population estimates. How prevalent are bobcats in our area? Well, very prevalent in our area. Very, uh, very. Seventy-five percent of all sightings in the entire state of Ohio have occurred in Noble County and a county that touches Noble County. Okay. So include you know Guernsey, Monroe. Uh, you know, the, our our we're right in the epicenter of bobcats. Um, have you seen? I mean, oh, yeah. I'm sure you have. Yeah, many, many times, yeah. Are they uh, an aggressive by nature? Um, no, no, no. I mean, it, like, many, like many animals, as long as you don't corner it, you're not going to have any problems with it. If it has a way to escape, mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to be an issue. Uh, but they are, uh, they are very skillful hunters, hunters in the woods, that's for sure. They, okay. uh, they have good, uh, good eyes. Well, so keep out there, you know, and let them know. I've, I've uh, called in about poll numbers before. It's just very easy to do or go online at the website. Yeah, and our website's well. wildohio.gov. Okay. A lot of information there, and, of course, you can upload, or upload the species site. All right, Roby Williams, the Guernsey County Game Warden. Busy time for you. Yes. Thanks for coming on the show. Good thanks, to see Thanks ya. for having me. And, uh, hey, we're going to be back to wrap it up in just a minute. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. That's going to do it for this edition of Talk of the Town. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks again to our special guests, Dr. Luke Bristocki, Michael Campbell, Captain Jeremy Wilkinson, Jamie Hopps, and Roby Williams. Let you know that you can catch the live stream of the Cambridge Meadowbrook game this Friday, and you can watch it on YRP TV as of right now. So for producer director Adam Green and Perry Brownish, we'll see you next time on Talk of the Town. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great, great place to live, work, and play. play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the Classic Difference for yourself. 
Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door.